the Queen pays tribute to strong as ever Prince Philip in Christmas message, Her Majesty thanks her husband as she pays tribute to terror victims, and jokes she has evolved since her first broadcast 60 years ago. The Queen praised the resilience of London and Manchester after appalling attacks, in a Christmas message today that also paid tribute to her husband, Prince Philip, who retired from regular royal duties this year. The Queen's message to the nation, and the Commonwealth looked back over the previous 12 months, taking home as its theme. The powerful identities of the capital, and the northern English city had shown through after militant attacks as well, as a devastating fire that destroyed the residential tower block Grenfell Tower in London, the Queen said. The 91-year-old monarch, whose televised address is an essential part of a traditional Christmas in Britain, said it had been a privilege to visit victims of the bomb attack at a pop concert in Manchester, as she was able to witness the bravery and resilience of survivors firsthand. This Christmas, I think of London and Manchester, whose powerful identities shone through over the past 12 months in the face of appalling attacks. In Manchester, those targeted included children who had gone to see their favourite singer. A few days after the bombing, I had the privilege of meeting some of the young survivors and their parents. I described that hospital visit as a privilege because the patients I met were an example to us all, showing extraordinary bravery and resilience. The nation endured a series of devastating terrorist atrocities during the year, beginning with the Westminster Bridge attack in March that saw four pedestrians die when an attacker, later shot dead by police, drove at them before fatally stabbing a police officer. On the 60th anniversary of her first televised Christmas address, Elizabeth said her reflections on the year had made her grateful, for the blessings of home and family, and praised her husband and his unique sense of humor. The 96-year-old prince, also known as the Duke of Edinburgh, has been at the Queen's side throughout her 65 years on the throne, and has often grabbed the headlines with his off-color comments. Elizabeth, the world's longest reigning monarch, celebrated her platinum wedding anniversary in November. Philip retired from regular royal duties over the summer having carried out more than 22,000 solo engagements. I don't know that anyone had invented the term platinum for a 70th wedding anniversary when I was born. You weren't expected to be around that long, she said. Even Prince Philip has decided it's time to slow down a little having, as he economically put it, done his bit. But I know his support and unique sense of humor will remain as strong as ever. Philip has continued to make occasional appearances, and joined other members of the royal family at a Christmas Day church service on their country estate in Sandringham. Also joining them for the service was Prince Harry's fiancée Meghan Markle who is spending Christmas with the royals, an unprecedented step, for someone who is yet to become an official member of the royal family. The Duchess of Cambridge did not spend Christmas at Sandringham until she and William were man and wife in 2011. Meghan, who will take British citizenship and get baptised by the Church of England before the wedding, will also attend the Christmas Day service at St Mary Magdalene Church in Sandringham, a spokesperson has confirmed. She and Harry who are now living together in a two-bed cottage in the grounds of Kensington Palace, will also take part in the traditional walk to Mass by the entire royal family. The American actress wore a distinctive brown hat, as she arrived at the church alongside the Queen's grandson Harry, his elder brother William and his wife Kate. As they left, both couples briefly chatted to some well-wishers who had gathered to glimpse the royals on Christmas morning. The Queen, who missed last year's service with a heavy cold, said in her address that she was looking forward to welcoming new members into the royal family next year. As well as Markle, who will marry Harry in May, Kate is expecting a third child. The Royal Christmas broadcast dates back to King George V in 1932 when it was on the radio. It was first televised in 1957. This year's annual address was produced by Sky News, and was recorded in the palace's 1844 room which is decorated with a large tree, and features family photos. Pictures of the Queen's great-grandchildren, Prince George and Princess Charlotte, can be seen along with two wedding-related images of the Queen and Philip, but taken 70 years apart. 
The royal couple are featured in a black and white image from their 1947 wedding, and in a color photo released to mark their 70th wedding anniversary celebrated in November. In the broadcast the Queen wore an ivory white dress by Angela Kelly, an outfit she first wore with a matching coat and hat, for the Diamond Jubilee Thames River pageant in 2012. She also wore a star-shaped diamond brooch. The Queen joked that she had evolved since her first televised Christmas message 60 years ago in 1957, alongside archive footage of the speech. Six decades on, the presenter has evolved somewhat, as has the technology she described. Back then, who could have imagined that people would one day be watching this on laptops, and mobile phones as some of you are today. Focus on one's family, Queen delivers her speech in room at Buckingham Palace surrounded by portraits of her loved ones including George and Charlotte and her and Prince Philip the Queen paid tribute to the royal family during her 60th Christmas speech, as she posed next to photos of her family. The monarch and her husband Prince Philip featured in a black and white image from their 1947 wedding, and in a color photo released to mark their 70th wedding anniversary celebrated in November. Photographs of the Queen's great-grandchildren, Prince George and Princess Charlotte, were also given pride of place. Taken by photographer Chris Jackson, the portrait of Prince George was issued by Kensington Palace on July 22 to mark the youngster's fourth birthday. Commenting on the portrait at the time, Jackson, who is married to Kate's personal assistant Natasha Archer, said he was thrilled and honored to have been asked to take the picture. He added, he is such a happy boy and certainly injects some fun into a photo shoot. The photo of Charlotte, meanwhile, was taken by her mother the Duchess of Cambridge to mark her second birthday on May 2. In the portrait, taken in April, Charlotte can be seen wearing a traditional Fair Isle cardigan in baby blue, and yellow from John Lewis that had sold out before the photo was released with a slightly crumpled Peter Pan collar, 12 pounds, from Jojo Mom and Bebe poking out of the top. Also visible on another table were portraits of Prince Harry and his fiancée Meghan Markle, as well as Prince Charles and his wife Camilla the Duchess of Cornwall. During the speech, Her Majesty wore an ivory dress threaded throughout with silk ribbon. Embroidered with gold, silver, and ivory spots, the dress is embellished with Swarovski crystals and a silk organza frill. The Queen first wore the dress, designed by Angela Kelly, on June 3, 2012, for the Diamond Jubilee River pageant.